Located in Parkland's area in the west of Nairobi, the 60 hectares of green space blended with the botanical gardens encompassed one of only a few remaining intact portions of the rich indigenous forest that once extended over much of Greater Nairobi and well beyond. This network of public footpaths fanning out from the park's central lawn continues to give city families a rare chance to explore the richness and the beauty of a natural heritage that elsewhere in Nairobi has largely disappeared. But this haven is under threat. Population pressures, coupled with lack of maintenance on some of the facilities, may have contributed to the fading beauty. But it could be better. A project to give it a facelift and develop it as a major metropolitan park with great international standing has been formalized. His Highness the Aga Khan and Prime Minister Raila Odinga oversaw the signing of the agreement between the Kenya government and the Aga Khan Trust for Culture that will pave the way for the trust to start its rehabilitation early next year. Well, remember how often your parents told you to be patient when you were in a hurry to see the good things in life. And the Arkan Trust for Culture started discussing this project in Nairobi eight to ten years ago. We've been patient. Nairobi has one of the fastest growing populations in East Africa. This growth requires a considerable effort on the government part to create the infrastructure and public facilities commensurate with the demands of this growing population. The project to be implemented in three phases entails environmental improvement, landscaping and creation of new facilities which will improve the quality of the site, making the environment safe for visitors besides providing the necessary recreational infrastructure. The site will become, through a rehabilitation process, a unique site for cultural activities, for education, particularly addressing to the younger generations of Kenyans, for leisure and which is also very important for social interaction. The first phase will involve site surveys and collection of significant data to help with the conservation, while the second phase will consist of actual project implementation. The third phase will be operation and management of the park's activities. Stopping a productive initiative simply because it might go on another six months or it might require additional financing is extremely short-sighted. What is important is to complete it to complete it well. With close to 10 parks and garden projects now in its portfolio, the Trust may have demonstrated that even in the most difficult contexts, parks can have a positive impact on a city if they are restored and maintained. Sheila Sendeo, NTV.